Hello, welcome back to another unboxing video again. Uh, this one's of the Bristol Bombay from Valum in 170 seconds ago. Uh, the Bombay was, if I recall, was actually originally a bomber, but um, wasn't that great as a bomber and was used more as a transporter and generic everything. Um, there's a couple of videos actually out on YouTube regarding the Bombay itself, so recommend giving them giving those a quick watch. Uh, this one's the African campaign one, which is interesting because if I read correctly, uh, the Bombay was actually used by the SAS as a base of operations while they were operating in um, North Africa, uh, either SAS or um, Long Range Desert Group. So, as per usual, we'll do the outside of the box. Uh, then we'll have a look at the instructions and the sprue and the decals on this one as well. So, first off, nice artwork as per usual on the outskirts. Avoid that bit, that's a bit of curry that accidentally just fell on the box. Um, yeah, it's a nice artwork depicting one of the Bombays taking off in North Africa. So, go to the side and not much there. Please recycle on a barcode. I would say I've got a little bit, little um picture, which again is Fallon's bomb best for Bombay. And just a Yeah, just some uh precautions, English and check. And again, not much there, and I believe this other side. Yep, same again. Fallon's Bristol Bombay. Okay, not much there, so let's open him up. Over there. Right. Instruction booklet in folded A4 bit of paper. Then we have baggy with all the screws in and the decals. So we'll have a look at the decals quickly as they're there. So not too bad. Um, got a few options, quite a large ones, I have to be careful with those. And some footprints. Uh, one thing you can definitely tell you ain't gonna mix up the numbers on this, are you? Wow, those are big. Normally the numbers about tenth, half that, not even half that size, a bit smaller. Does come with resin and photo etch as well, so yay. Right, so let's go have a look at the instructions. No jump cuts, it was in reach. So a little bit of history on the Bombay. Yeah, you can pause to read that if you want. Uh, there we go. Right, let's open him up. Weirdly, this it starts with, well, the outside piece is your colour guide, or the paint guides. So let's have a look at these first, as it's there. So, azure blue underneath, with... Doesn't quite seem right, really. Sand and green? Where's the paint thing on this? It's on the back page. There's the back page. So we've got A and uh, B and F. Okay. B is dark earth and pale stone, not sand. That's interesting because most of them are sand coloured. If my skies there. Where's interior grey green? Uh, yeah, there it is. Copic green. Umbro 78, interior grey green. So yeah, you've got a few options there, so Umbro, Agba, never heard of them before, Master Model, Gruns, or whatever they are. Sorry, some a couple of those say Agba and the FS I haven't heard of before. So, okay, interesting colours. So it is sand and green on the front, or on the top, so. Hmm, interesting. Right, let's have a look at the instructions bits. Um, you'll notice with the Valum kits, the unlike other boxes like Air, kits like FX Rebel, etc., where the they'll have a little tab on the side or sometimes imprinted on the inside of the actual piece, like sometimes the inside of the wing, you will have uh, the n little tab saying here's the number. Some kits, Valum's one of them, they don't do that, they specifically make you reference the instructions on the front page. So you may end up bouncing 
to and from the instructions to that front page quite a few times. And of course, here's even more. Regenerate intakes as well. Yay, okay. Plus photo etch. Two lots of photo etch. I didn't spot that second one. Where's that hiding? Hmm. Open the kit, we'll have a look. But apparently there's two sets of photo etch. So, quite a bit of interior detail. A nice little guide of how the radio and everything gets set up on the inside. You've got the paint guide as well, all the letters. N plus H, so that's just a mix of the two. It's same O plus H. Left, uh, left side, the port side of the fuselage, and the right slash starboard side. Some nice details on the inside. Wonder how much that you're going to see when you um, build it and put the glass um, canopies over and everything. Most models would let you know, would tell you. You put all the detail on the inside. You put the model together. You won't see any of it. Oh well. Satisfaction to know. Satisfaction to know it's hiding there. I believe mm, is that bomb site, or does it go into the machine gun? It might be the leftovers of the machine gun. I say this is just a transport version, so it doesn't actually. I'm saying it's a travel transport version. And you look at the picture there, and it shows the machine guns front and back. Okay, my mistake, that's a drill. I thought it was cut that off, but no, it's not cut the barrel off the machine gun, it is to put the machine gun in. Okay, so the front and rear turrets. All the glass which goes on the outside in. Yeah, that's interesting, some of them do it from the inside out. But I know that um, Airfix Pinecore 111, that's on the outside in as well. Crossbeam. Quite a few kits are doing this now as well, so that's um, handy. It gives a bit more see structure to the wings when you try and glue them on. Speak of the devils, there's the wings. Plus light and glass. That was as simple as that. Tailpiece. So yeah, we've got... Yeah. Mine went blank. Sorry. Rudder plus aileron. Slide them together and put a support strike on. Kind of simple. Then you've got the wings, cockpit, nose and tail guns on. And then the same with the tails. You've got to put the ailerons and rudders on and another support beam. You'll notice, I say, you notice another thing with, um, might as well say now, with like Valon kits. There's no locator studs either. Which is handy for new people, new um, people to the hobby, because you know you can line up the pieces correctly. If they're moulded correctly, sometimes they're not, and you have, if, say, that's the two sides of the kit together, and they end up something like that. All right. Engine. One of the resin engines plus the cowlings on the outside. Keep note, because the exhaust shoots out either one way or the other. There's the air intakes. Which then... Really, they don't tell you where to stick it there, and there's only boom. Sorry. I'll repeat that. Shows you here. And then boom. Where are they? A few little odds and sods. Um... If you're like me, I tend to leave these off while I'm painting it and doing the decal, so when I handle the plane, I'm not going to accidentally knock all the little things off. Aerials, radar. That's interesting. It's asked you to put all the aerials and stuff on first, and then put the landing gear on. So you're going to have to flip it over and definitely knock this lot off. Definitely do not do that. But yeah, it tells you how to put the wing, uh, wheels on and gives you a, a handy side side glance, not side glance, sorry, front front view of the, how it should set up. That's quite a handy feature to have. And the tail wheel, two piece, why two pieces? Oh, well, two piece tail wheel. Yeah, two, tail, two piece tail wheel to go into, well, there. 
And then finally, one racks. No bombs, but you have got the racks to put them on. Go underneath. It's like like a light bomber. I say it was used more as a transporter, but those that read the um, history on the front page will know more about it. Right. G baggy. Right. Small jump cut as I'm just going to. Oh yeah, there's there's the other um, photo etch brew. So yep, let me um. Open, jump cut as I open up the bag and get the sprues out. Should have probably refocused the camera before resuming the video. Oh well. Um, yep, the photo, well, might as well do the photo edge first. So, yep, there's the bomb rack. So you literally cut them out, uh, fold them in half, and take the tabs, spray these little tabs up to the side of the bombs. And then the other photo edge sprue, the one I couldn't find initially. So the P-Tor tube, some of the aerials, radar, that's all photo etched. That's nice because that more represents how like, thin they were, not the thick plastic things. Rudders, or oh, not rudders, uh, foot pedals for the rudder, radio bits, um, control panel. It's all quite nice in there. Um, quite, quite a bit of bending to get the seats in place. Uh, not seats. Harness. Oh, that's the word. Get these harnesses in. So yeah, fun and games with those. I, my personal opinion, um, experience, I not have much luck with those. I might try, I'll try to do it again. I've had some success. Other side, going to be pretty much the exact same thing. So for the difference on here is because all the detail was on the other side. This side, it's just all flat. Decaled again. Okay. To keep things from being the same, it's a baggy with the resin parts in it. So, uh, not badly moulded. Look quite nice. The detail on there, the cooling range and everything. Um, I can't mean, okay, I'll bear with the instructions. Looks like we might need to do a bit of clean up on the back here. Could be wrong, but it looks like we might need to do a bit of clean up there. And yep, the air vent, uh, the air intake there. Uh, if anybody's not used resin before, be slightly careful because the dust can be slightly toxic. Uh, again, what I've read up, and I've done it before. I've not killed myself yet, so so far so good. But yeah, just be careful of sanding the stuff down, and then equally uh, use a knife and file saw. Saw down here by the gate. That's what I'm pretty sure that's called. That's a gate. Saw down here and then cut away slash sand file till you get to the bit you need. Resin is extremely fragile at times, so if you snip right up here, there's a good chance A, that's going to go ping, or it's going to go ping in two different places as it snaps in half. Uh, I need super glue to glue that stuff together. If you know how to use resin and how to work with it, good. Definitely need washing these things. Um, but yeah, just if any beginners that are working with resin haven't worked with resin, some clues there, some tips. The kind of the glass, the clear plastic, actually looks quite clear. I know this is through the baggie. I'm not intending to put my fingers all over it just yet. I'm not making it at the moment. Clear plastic um, looks quite clear, so you're actually going to see some of the detail on the inside. It's very nice, got all the windows, front turret, rear turret. Yeah, very nice. I uh, recommend using PVA for that, not not plastic glue. Um, I have used super glue to, and it has worked before, but I know super glue can also fog it, so I've got to be careful with that. Finally, the plastic sprue. Yeah. There we go. So detail, I'm gonna raise it all up and then I'm zooming it back in again. Panel lines aren't too bad. They're nicely. They're not too deep. They're enough. They're enough just to give you an impression. You got the. You got the rib showing for the canvas as what well, canvas um control services. That's really nice. A little bit of flashing back here. That's easy enough. To get rid of the file. It's a tiny bit. 
and the slot on for slot for the um, wing spar is filled in so you have to cut that out but the wings again nicely paneled oh I just spotted that Oop. ah that's all bent up on the ends there that's the cap problem sometimes you got got to be careful with that and the same with the wing on this side oh there's my sock landing gear camera not focused yeah there we go refocused so quite a bit of work in this kit, there's quite a bit of flash. There's the other side of the um, aid run, some more of the air intake to exhaust. Did you note here, as what I was saying earlier, we've got the ejector pin marks as well. This has got a lot of work to do on it before we assemble it. But yeah, no locator studs, so nothing on the side here when you put it on the fuselage, which is hiding up there at the moment. Yeah, no locator stubs to put up against the fuselage and nothing to line this bit up with this bit. So yeah, um, it's easy enough to do. Um, wouldn't recommend it for beginners, but it is fairly easy to line the stuff up correctly. So okay, that's the upper part of the wings and the tail surfaces. Lower wings. I don't know if that's, that's actually chipped. That's annoying, that one's chipped. Well, that is bent again. Of course it is. Again, nicely detailed. The panel lines and the control surfaces nicely reflect what they're supposed to be. Pillars, quite nice. Not too sure what those are. We'll find out. Some of the other stuff, quite nice, quite nice. Ah, there's the lights. Actually, kind of look like lights with the bulbs in the middle. That makes a change. Ah, yeah, there's a run of the radio kits. Uh, yeah, radio kit there. Not, no detail on it. One seat, another seat, and another seat. Yeah, it kind of snapped off. And so uh, again, not much. Fairly nice overall, but right, fuselage. Kind of a long plane, this one. It will say raised panel lines, but that probably is correct. It's not technically raised panel lines, it'd probably be more um, strengthening ribs. Because you zoom in and focus. There's yeah, the panel lines, which are recessed. Oh, for the um, the cross beam support beam, which is hiding there. Again, there's a lot of work actually done needed on this. A lot of filing and sanding. Uh, uh, that's the door. Let it get in and out of the plane. Flip them over, and the detail, the detail in the cockpit, the upside down, is nice. Another locator. Um, not located stud, beg your pardon, ejection pin mark. There's a few scattered about in here. That's actually the cockpit side, so that uh, instrument, navigator side, was the cockpit side, barely anything. Ooh. And equally, there's absolutely no detail physically on the inside. I know you're not going to probably see much through the windows, but the windows are actually fairly clear, so you could see something. So, ooh, a bit of a negative on that side. Wheels, two halves, again, no locator bits, so be careful and have fun with that. Yeah, that's the tail wheel as well. No pilots in this kit, so we can't do the jelly baby test. Oh, well, this looks like it's going to be a challenging plane, but rewarding once made. So, yeah, so we're we'll on the Valum Bombay. Um, Stay tuned, uh, like the video if you liked it, comments for any suggestions you like uh, for models for me to review, uh, sub subscribe for say, more reviews and uh, unboxings. Okay, thanks, bye.